A road accident leaves seven people dead and 20 others seriously injured in the Sanago Maritime Division of the Litwa region of the country. And as the twin elections approach across the country, in the English-speaking regions, peace and client initiatives are being taken to ensure each free elections. These are the top stories, the news in full in just a jiffy. Good evening, televiewers, and welcome on this other edition. This uh, week starts on Equinox uh, Television. A group of farmers uh, wrote to work uh, have uh, missed others, uh, the part of that, and others have embraced the world beyond. We are in the Sanago Maritime uh, Division of the Litra region, uh, precisely at Masak Songlulu, where some seven farmers who were transporting or were traveling uh, to their respective areas of work uh, actually embraced that. And 20 others have been seriously wounded, and these wounds are receiving treatment in local hospitals. We have details with you, Immaculate Fogwe. This heavy-duty truck, which was on its way to the Sanaga Maritime Division central town and had 36 passengers on board alongside several bags of maize, won't be able to arrive at its final destination. The passengers, who were farmers heading to the farm, got involved in an accident on the Lela Bridge in the Masok Song Lulu Subdivision, Sanaga Maritime Division, in the Litura region of Cameroon. Seven persons died on the spot, with 20 orders severely injured. The dilapidated state of the bridge alongside its roots have been blamed as the root cause of the incident. <laughs> You people can see for yourself the state of the bridge. We are suffering due to the bad state of our roads and bridges. We can now see the results of such. If we had better bridges than this, such incidents wouldn't have occurred. The senior divisional officer of the Senegal Maritime Division arrived to the accident scene in order to get first-hand information of the situation. I would like to thank all those who put in efforts to help rescue some of the passengers. We are putting things in place so as to rescue the injured victims. The senior divisional officer equally visited the Tumbel Hospital where the injured passengers were receiving treatment. The seven corpses have been laid at the Deya Next Regional Mortuary. And still on our Human Interest page, we are with you, Smart Chica and Gabriel, who tells us in the city of Douala Litra, a region of the country, that some ex workers of the Douala International Container Company have blocked the office of an insurance company that was supposed to pay their dues. You recount the story. It was a tight security that was placed in front of an insurance company in Bonanjo, the heartbeat of Cameroon's economic capital, Douala, this Monday. Former employees of the Douala International Containers Company are angry. So I'm here today to ask my money that these people are owing me because the contract we had with them has finished right up to today. I have no way to see my landlord because December salary they haven't given me. They are still holding it. And we have been here for about three weeks time asking our money, they are still turning us. So that's why we are here today to reclaim our money. The workers say DIT sent them to register their names with the insurance company that was supposed to pay them after retiring or when their contract ends. I'm asking the government to see into our problems where a contract is finished with data but he doesn't want to pay us so we don't really know why he's keeping our money. If we want to recall all our money, we have to take about five billion. The workers who were bent on getting their money 
were against any sort of discussion, not even when a worker of the insurance company came out to talk with them. Je suis venu pour vous dire une chose. Votre histoire de, de pension complémentaire est en train d'être réglée. D'accord Dans les 72 heures, 72 des chèques heures. seront prêts. 72 heures. Our first attempt to meet with officials of the said insurance company field. But due to the agitation of the workers, we finally got in touch with the director of the company. I, I was a little bit surprised, you know, to have some people, you know, uh, coming in from Tom Versus. So I had some rumors. Uh, obviously, you know, the people working, you know, in the company said to me that we had more and more people coming from the DIT and asking, you know, for uh, the payment of their savings, uh, the pen pensions or savings, if you want. So uh, what I said, I called the IT first, spoke to them, we thought about them, uh, we thought about uh, a possible solution. This solution, you know, by amendment to a contract uh, was proposed. Uh, they asked uh, us yesterday evening and this morning uh, par mail, they asked us to issue a project of amendment to the contract, which will be done, you know, in the, well, in the coming minutes. The contract that the insurance company signed with DIT were very clear. The contract says and provides that uh, it can be paid, pensions can be paid if uh, the employee uh, is retired or if he leaves the company and there are some uh, documents to provide uh, for that. Uh, what we say to the employer, we say that, well, we are in some circumstances where Maybe they could probably deliver a certain share of the savings uh, on those accounts, first of all, according to a new process to be implemented. I mean, an easygoing process. 72 hours has been given by officials of the insurance company to sort out the misunderstanding between the S workers of DIT and the insurance company. A situation concerning the Dweller International Terminal. And unto other human interest stories, some four reputed car bandits have been presented to the population by the judicial police. Today they are reputed, as you tell us once again, Smart Jake and Gabriel in fake car documents. A busy street in front of the judicial police station in Bonanjo. Within the office, three cars are parked in the Esplanade. Cars that were picked up during an operation by the anti-gang unit of the Public Security Office. According to security sources, it all started on the 3rd of January when Mayu Zhang Charles decided to elope with the Prado of his Chinese master, Ling Zhangjing and sold it at 3.5 million francs CFA to So Jacques, who is a car retailer. It is a car that I drove. I was in contact with Fumbu Landry, who directed me to the buyer. For me, the money wasn't important because I don't deal in such business. Moi, mon problème, c'était pas, c'était pas l'argent, parce que moi, comme j'ai dit, je me répète, je ne fais pas dans ce genre de choses. For the retailer, so Jacques. Je n'ai pas acheté une voiture volée, mais. I didn't buy a stolen car, but I bought and transferred to another person. Moi, je fais dans les démarches au port et tout. Et tout. Because of the limited parking space, four other cars were parked at the mobile intervention police unit. JMI 2 within the four alleged car thieves, two Siwe Jack and Munjam Elize were specialized in making fake wheel screen licenses and number plates. Both had already made the documents and the objects to be placed on the stolen cars before they were arrested. The alleged car thieves were taken to court where their fate was decided. 
and assigned by the Prime Minister Chief Dr. Joseph John Guti to the Southwestern region, precisely the 10th Division, the Chief of her Cabinet, precisely the Director of the Prime Minister's Office, Vista the Sons, and that is of the 10th Division in the Southwestern region. Reasons for this visit has been to spurt the people in that part of the country and ensure heat free twin elections. <laughs> The Cameroon Prime Minister Special Envoy to Indian Division makes his entrance at the Bolo Beach in Mondemba. A bonnet confiance director of cabinet at the Prime Minister's office is visiting a division that has seen the side of every face in this anglophone crisis. And as he climbed down on home soil for the first time after his appointment, a special reception was reserved for him. Hey! And with him, was the message from Cameroon Prime Minister and Head of Government to the Indian people. The Prime Minister, Head of Government, dispatched me and a powerful delegation accompanying me to carry his words of encouragement and gratitude to the people of Indian Division for being by him and with him for the past one year. Before converging at this Mundimba ceremonial ground stand to listen to the message and receive this humanitarian aid from Chief Dr. Joseph John Gute, the Cameroon Prime Minister and Head of Government, the Director of Cabinet at the Prime Minister's Office granted over 20 audiences from traditional rulers to the youth, the men, women, associations, head of services, the business class and farmers, among others, during which talks were frank, they told the PM's envoy that heavy destructions, killings and displacement have also been recorded in Jan Division. We did a sleep, we did a, you know, alarm, we did a, we have to go like opera. We have to go like opera. We don't know where to complete. So we are talking. And now that they have decided to pick up the remaining pieces of what is left of them and forge ahead for peace and development, another hindrance is staring them in the face, and that is bad road. Responding, a bono confiance director of cabinet at the Prime Minister's office pointed that the step has already been taken in that direction. The military engineering corps is presently doing the job. They started about three days ago. Take from Kumba, through Kundu and branches to Mbonge, through Mbonge as well, through Mundimba, through Toko, right up to Mayimen. Health too was a priority here, as Dr. Ibungu Zakios Nanje, the Southwest Regional Delegate of Public Health, took down a team of doctors for consultations and treatment. To Fawang Lawrence, the senior divisional officer from Jan Division, the peaceful atmosphere in his division is as a result of the collaboration between the population and his administration. Thanking both the Prime Minister and his Director of Cabinet for being available and reliable, the Indian traditional rulers decorated Director of Cabinet with the title Mukweli, which means a forerunner. And as he returns to his Yaoundé style building, the director of cabinet is aware that in this context a mantle has been given to him to be a forerunner, to pave the way for the prime minister to come home and to be a forerunner, to bring development in Jan Division in particular and the southwest region in general. And in the same spirit, we stay in the southwest region of the country where the senior divisional officer of the Kupemwanengo Bar Division, we are still in the southwest region, Shao Mari Chakwi, has on his part called on the local community to keep away from trouble and go for peaceful elections. We have details with Innocent Aze. Nothing will stop holding of the legislative and municipal elections come February 9th, 2020 in Kupe Maninguba Division of the Southwest Region. It is an assurance made by the senior divisional officer, Jean-Marie Chakui, during a security evaluation meeting. I'm calling on my population not to pay attention on all those uh, uh, black, black male of boycott I've been hearing. 
According to him still, everything is set for the twin elections in his area of command. We are happy uh, to say that everything is set in Kupen and Kumba division. Ele electoral cards have been distributed. Uh, those who are still to be distributed, uh, I'm inviting population to go uh, to the Elecan branch of the council to have the, the, the voting cards or according to the law they have them in police station on the D-Day. These administrative authorities believe CAM has returned in Kupe Maninguba thanks to relentless efforts of the military who have been spending sleepless nights to push back those they consider terrorists and enemies of peace. They also call on those who have fled the division to return and embrace normal life with assurance of their safety. And we keep talking election with these images in brief, uh, just to talk about the ruling party. Internal quarrels and conflict uh, threatening to weaken would see and disintegrate the ruling Cameroon People's Democratic Movement CPD and political party in the Vuri division and the Litua region of uh, Cameroon. Some militants and officials of the party in the Vuri division have been a dagger's drawn in a part tussle over positions of responsibility in ahead of the February 9th municipal and legislative elections, the CPDM Central Committee Secretary General and other big weeks of the party have come to stop the infighting during a meeting at the party house and Bonanjo Odwala Shankwiti condemned the CPDM against CPDM fight and called on the militants to be united in a bid would say to consolidate and strengthen the party. Uh, greater details would certainly be having in an exit of uh, Professor Elvis Ngolengole, a former minister and member of the CPDM Central Committee. We have his exit. Welcome back. Rada will be catching up in our subsequent editions of the news. Up next, we get on Talking Point. Welcome back. On Talking Point today, we have someone more concerned with the Anglophone crisis because he went to digging in his mind, digging into history to come up with, with a book, would see, on the Anglophone crisis in Cameroon. It's a sort of God's call, uh, this for national reconciliation. He's a legal mind and he is as well a member of the Cameroon Saba Association, uh, Chechukwi Michael Leke Lefek. I hope I'm not breaking down your name. Welcome on Talking Point. Welcome on Equinox. Thank you, Madam Hermin. Uh, good evening once more, televiewers of Equinox Television. And since this is my first appearance at, uh, before this channel this year, I wish you all Happy New Year as we pray for a nation which is going through this crisis, these tough moments in uh, the history of our life as a nation. And talking about history, we got to realize that you have a book. And there was this book which you published months back. And the book comes back a lot on the realities on the ground in the English-speaking regions. What actually motivated you to, to come up with this book? Yes, Madam Hermin, thank you for that, uh, this wonderful question. My motivation principally is because as a member of the Bar Association, I think the crisis broke out within a profession to which I belong. And after a series of uh, independent contacts with uh, some members of the Bar Administration, in order to see if a, a general assembly could it could be convened to discuss and uh, maybe propose solutions to the government. Uh, I, I discovered that there was a very resist, I can say resist, resistance from these uh, members uh, before my actually solicited audiences and I met them. So I discovered that it was necessary that as a, an individual, as a lawyer, I should take this initiative to see if I could understand the problem then try to propose to bring it out to the understanding, bring it as a contribution on my own part, and equally call on other Cameroonians to, uh, to practice, to cultivate this culture of trying to say that we should not cry, but we should look into our, our problems as individuals and as a group. And it is in this spirit that we can actually move, uh, we can actually uh, resolutely take actions in order to overcome challenges like the one we are going through. If you look at the history, you see that the crisis is, is so much focused on history. 
like let me take an example you discover that uh, uh, the partition of Cameroon between the colonial powers was, took place in 1916 and the crisis came up in 19 in 20, 2016 and you discover that the, we are we have been living some other challenges we, we may be uh, the, uh, the, 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 the creation of the GCE board, uh, the, the, the adoption of the criminal procedure code, all these are challenging moments too that Cameroon has gone through, even democracy in the 1990s. So that is why this, when this crisis broke out, it was like, uh, to me, it's like some uh, call, divine call, that God is calling on Cameroonians to say, but abandon the, the, the part of uh, this this part of hatred, this part of a division, and look onto your nation as a one pers as one person. So that is a, maybe this is the principal motivation, which from where I and do you also look at it like a divine call to redefine history? Uh, not to redefine history per se, but it is to write history for this generation. Because when we want to refine, redefine history, we cannot redefine what has been what has been written. Mm -hmm. But we can maybe we can correct what has been written. And by correcting, we are not redefining. So that is why I think that it is a call for us to write the history for, of this generation. So, uh, uh, now, what are the key inspirational words we could pick out from this book? Yes, for uh, this generation you're talking about. Yes, um, uh, Madam I mean, thank you for the, the question. You, you discover the book is titled "Anglophone Crisis in Cameroon: God's Call for National Reconciliation." And when we're talking about God's call for national reconciliation, you will discover that it begins with all a prayer of peace of uh, one saint who has taught us how we can overcome peace issues, St. Francis of Assisi. So from this prayer, you, it is calling us, Lord, make us an instrument of your peace. So if we Cameroonians, we all are instrument of peace, how can we cultivate this peace into our society? How can we propagate this peace into the, uh, our society? You discover that this as an instrument of peace. You will not be bothered with what the other person is doing, but you will be bothered on what you can do in order to let peace flow into the society. That is why the first chapter of this book, which is made up of four brief chapters, okay. is titled, Ask Not What the Other Has Done or Is Doing to na the Nation, mm -hmm. but what my, Christian, what my contribution to nation building is. As an a, individual. As an individual, a Christian call for individual commitment mm -hmm. in peace, love, and reconciliation at the service of our fraternity. When you look at it, if you have this individual commitment to work in love, to work with peace at, at the center of your actions, reconciliation, knowing that I am, a, I, I, as an individual, I have my shortcomings. You, as an individual, you have your shortcomings, but that when we have to discuss issues which concern our nation, we should not be looking at our differences, but we should rather be looking at those Convergent points where which can build us up, knowing that you are, our differences are rather a source, a strength we should f hold on, not to be uh, not to be separated, but to recognize that each and every one is called to have some uh, weaknesses. So from there you discover that this chapter, this first chapter, is so much concerned on what are those areas that as a nation we have failed. To, we have failed to, 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 to look at it, you will discover the administrative organization of the state, you will discover the legislative constituencies of the state, you will discover uh, that even our national monuments today, we have national monuments which to me they are just some, uh, they, don't have, they don't convey any message that we will want a generation to come, to live after, to, rec to remember that this is what this generation uh, did. So these are some of those little problems that you, you discover here. And in summary, we can call this, the, we can look at the first chapter can be addressing the problem which we can, a global problem of bad governance. Okay. Uh, bad governance, though I call it mistakes. Uh, so we identify these areas and you discover that there are some propositions are, uh, which are, are made. Then the second chapter, since the crisis broke out, the, we are, the government has been trying at its best to resolve this crisis. Mm -hmm. What's the appreciation so far you have of uh, the attempt made by the government to, uh, to maybe handle the situation? Uh, probably, I, I think that the attempts, just like uh, any government, will be trying to... Uh, will be partial, try to, uh, effective? Not partial, not effective. I, I think the... Neutral? The, 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 the just, it's just a confused, it's just a confused trial by the government. Okay. Uh, so, the, 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 it is... And when you look at the, the, the second chapter, it is, 
at calling the Anglophone crisis a litmus test in the quantum of love in our society since independence till now. So you discover that from 1960, in the 1960 where we, our, our fathers were having independence, obtaining independence, there was a, a two question, there was a problem uh, of two cultures. Some were in honest in their transactions. The Southern Cameroonians were honest in their transactions about French Cameroon counterparts, not the Francophones per se, but the leaders who were then were not honest in their transaction. This, will up, this is what will, will culminated in the 1972 referendum, which is, a, I can say, a, which is the main cause of this problem today that you discover that as an Anglophone, you will live in a, a society which is predominantly French and not even only predominantly, predominantly French, but which seems to ignore the fact that there is another person who is not of the same identity like I am. So this is a, a problem. You discover that the government has been trying to address this, this crisis. It may be by the way of uh, persecution. I call it persecution because some have been arrested and prosecuted, which and I call it persecution because this has not been, the attire has not been in compliance with the law. Mm -hmm. And you discover that the central point of argument which this crisis uh, is raised from the beginning is about the issue of secession. Yeah. And uh, let, me, let me say here that even uh, one of the motivation is that as a, the African Union Commission on Human and People's Rights mm -hmm. has had to decide on the question of the right to self-determination, mm -hmm. which is equally uh, recognized by the uh, Charter of the United Nations. So this uh, instrument, which the, the, build up. The, the build up this chapter, uh, the, 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 the chap this chapter two of this uh, work. So you discover that the right to self determination, which I was talking of, mm -hmm. the African the Banjo Commission has elaborately and objectively addressed this question. But since we have a government and peoples who have, I think they, they have an imagination of what it should be, it should be done in the society, and not what it should be real, what is real in the society. This was has been kept in abeyance, and to pushing up, 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 up to this, uh, taking us up to the point where we are today. Where we are, and talking about the point where we are today, uh, who do you blame at the end of this game and the situation we have as it's now in the country? Do you blame the state, the people? The who do you hold responsible for what Cameroon is today? The principal responsibility goes to the administration, but we as individuals. We constitute the administration, so it is a shared responsibility. Though I will, I, I, I will say the principal as the administration, because when you look at the administration, is supposed to accompany us as individual in our actions and to uh, and, uh, ensure that there is social cohesion, there is harmony, there is harmonious living in the society. But where this cannot, this is not done, you discover that the individual has little or nothing to do, except you should be hoping that better days are coming. This can only be for people who believe in, in the gospel. But how many, how many are there, how many are those who are faced with challenges will be taking, thinking about the gospel? Let me cite an example, uh, Madam Hermin, to make it, to, to clarify what I'm saying. You discover that when this crisis broke out, the attention we have seen the government paying to some other crisis, to some other uh, conflicts, like we, we, we found ministers, uh, state ministers, uh, are going to enjoy a lot. But when the, the, when when street children were uh, disgruntled, we found ministers being deployed. But whereas when the crisis, when lawyers uh, striked in, uh, went to the street, they were being flocked. Mm -hmm. You discover that there is discrimination in the treatment. So when you look at this, that is why I said the government has a, princ a principal responsibility. Mm -hmm. But as individuals too, I think we have heard about the government in, in, in the failures, in the failures at times too, because when you discover that this is what is this, what, what the government is doing is wrong, I think it is better to stay on what is right than to join the, the, the government in what is wrong. Take, for example, corruption today. The, the system is corrupt. Go to the administration, it is corrupt. But we Cameroonians, 
because of the fact that there is corruption. We practice it, and how can we be kind? So you discover that it is a shared responsibility, but the government assumes the principal because it has failed, it has not understood its role as the administration and what the administration is supposed to, how the administration is supposed to attend to the needs of the society. And three years rolling on with respect to the crisis, no attempt so far have been made by the government. You, you hold a responsible for a greater share of what the country is, no attempt so far have been made to address the situation, no ameliorations? Uh, Madam I mean, the question is not the government, it's different from an individual. Okay. The actions of a government are supposed to, uh, they are supposed to bring, I, I, I think they are supposed to redress the situation, the crisis in this. In, but when the actions are rather radicalizing the situation, you cannot be saying that the government is, ad take for example, we, I just saw in your report, uh, in your news, talking about the situation, the crisis uh, uh, yeah. situation, uh, permitting free and fair elections in our, okay, in our, in our country. But this was what has been what has changed from 2018 when the presidential elections took place. And you remember, presidential elections took place. The same people are reporting that the environment is atmosphere is conducive. Uh, the same people are still giving us the same reports today. And the head of state, you remember the head of state in his swearing speech, uh, swearing in at uh, swearing in uh, ceremony, yeah. recognized the fact that majority of Anglophones did not vote at presidential elections. Okay. And these people, we have refugees, thousands of refugees out of the country. We have a th a thousands of IDPs out of the country. Mm -hmm. I, I, you, if you look, this is my electoral card mm -hmm. which I voted, but I cannot have access to going to Libelum to vote. So tell me how we are, we are talking about a, a, a transparent, uh, the, uh, the, the envi an environment which a is conducive, a conducive environment. environment. So you look at you look at it. It is a government. It should not be taking actions which will not promote peace building. But it should at times abstain to see that the interest of the society which it seeks to protect is paramount to. Uh, it may be what. It, we, it, the logic that the, the government should it has to an agenda of the government. Now, before I take leave of you, uh, what are the, the mechanisms which you would maybe have to dish out uh, to the government, to the states? Those mechanisms which are still lacking to make Cameroon a peaceful, a peaceful country in the next 10, 15 years to come. Yes, Madam I mean, thank you for that question. I think that is one of the uh, to the one the principal mechanism. How do we? imbued love in our, into our society. We can only do this if we have, we are confident, the Cameroonians can be confident of the structure, the, their administration first. You can be con confident about uh, in the judicial apparatus of your own nation that if I, as we are here today, if I have a problem, I go to court, I will have judicial redress without any problem. So you discover that the first is the judicial. We are talking about, we are looking about the head. What about the health sector? You discover that we, the head of state announced uh, uh, coverage and inter, I don't know how, yeah. coverage and inter, some years. General uh, health coverage program. Uh, mm -hmm. up to, uh, as we are talking today, it's about three years or two years. Mm -hmm. uh, what, to what extent has it been implemented? Mm -hmm. So you discover that when there is a, 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 the feeling of rejection in, in the society, there is no way that we can be looking at. So the mechanism is how do we inculcate virtues which we promote belonging that we feel that all of us we are one the judicial apparatus is the center and then we can be think, uh, thinking about educa educating the people that our difficulties difficulties are part and parcel of our human life and this we can build an, an administration which is uh, re-administration, not an imaginary administration Thank you nation. Thank so you. much. Thank you for accepting our invitation and for coming from afar, from the central region, to enter presence today on Equinox Television. Thank you, Madam Hermin. Okay, and the televiewers who are receiving Chechokwi Michelle Aleke Lefak, a member of Cameroon Aba Association. That does it for this pack of the news. We'll meet again tomorrow. Same time, same vessel. Have a lovely evening.